Howdy, this is Lemmy with RevZilla TV, here to talk to you today about how to change the brakes on your motorcycle. So if you're watching this video, my guess is you fall into one of two camps. You might be the rider who has simply worn out their OEM brake pads and they're looking to replace them so you can continue stopping. That's a great reason to replace your brake pads. The smaller subgroup of you may be folks who have some life left in your pads still, or maybe you don't, doesn't really matter, but you're looking to change your brake pads mostly to get a, some different characteristics with respect to braking. You might be looking for something with a little more initial bite or perhaps a pad that dusts a little less. Regardless, you're looking to change your braking experience, and both of those are great reasons in order to, uh, in order to change up brake pads, experiment, see what else is out there, and how you can upgrade your factory ride. Now you can see here we're working on Buzzsaw's Tiger, it's a fairly late model motorcycle. Now this bike has disc brakes fairly obviously and they are hydraulically operated. The process however of changing brakes is going to be pretty similar from motorcycle to motorcycle. If you're rocking a drum brake or something that's mechanically actuated it is going to be a little bit different for you but those are few and far between so we're not really concentrating on those styles of brake right now. Now you can see this thing is equipped with a radial caliper. If you have conventional mount brakes the process is very similar but if you want extra deep analysis swing over to our common tread article where we also did a brake job on a conventional mount brake system as well. Installation on these is really easy. Throwing new brake pads in your bike is a one bearder on our BSD, our beard scale of difficulty. I'm going to call it a one bearder, maybe plus a sideburn. I'll explain that in just a second. The actual tools you need are pretty minimal, just a couple of hand tools in order to get this job done. You don't need a lift at all. I've got Buzzsaw's bike up on the lift, really, just so you guys can see exactly what it is that I'm doing with my hands. Now, the reason I mentioned that sideburn is that these are brakes. Even though this is mechanically simple, brakes are important. You need to stop. You should be confident in your ability to do a brake job. So if it's something that you're a little bit concerned about, have a buddy walk you through it. But if you've got some decent tools and you're confident that you know what you're doing when it comes to you know, general mechanical knowledge, most people should be able to get a brake job done themselves with a minimum of effort and you should feel pretty confident in your work. So let's get right to things. I'm gonna describe the process a little bit and then we'll start tearing this bike apart. What we're going to do is remove the actual caliper itself. Once we get the caliper off there, we're going to check out the condition of the pads, we're going to look at the condition of the rotors, and then we're going to clean everything up, just generally clean the parts, especially the ones we're going to be putting back into play. From there, we're going to lubricate a couple of important pieces, we're going to put the new pads in, we're going to bolt everything back up, and there we're pretty much complete. The job really is very simple. Now before we get started, a couple things I do want to warn you about. You'll notice I'm wearing these goofy gloves. Brake pad material is carcinogenic, so the dust that collects on your brakes, also carcinogenic. Protect yourself. Some of you may even elect to wear a respirator. The other thing I'm going to sort of clue you into, too, is because we're doing a brake job, this is a hydraulic system. So once you have this caliper off, it's really important you don't hit the brake lever or the brake pedal, depending on whether you're working with the front, on the front or the rear of the motorcycle. So if that means you have to write yourself a big note or perhaps tell your roommate not to come in the garage, whatever it takes, make sure that once that caliper comes off the bike, you don't hit the brake pedal or the brake lever. It could be as serious as requiring a caliper rebuild, which is no fun, especially if you're trying to do just a quick brake job. So let's get cracking on things as of right now. The first thing I want to do is remove this caliper so that I can actually assess the condition of some of the stuff inside here and we can see how Ed's brake system is actually doing on his bike. So I'm going to loosen up these bolts. As you can see here, I'm just going to back these out, spin them right out here, and then I'm going to move on to the upper bolt. And as I do this, I'm going to support the caliper. And the reason I'm going to do that is because these are the only two things holding the caliper to the motorcycle. So I'm going to spin these puppies loose and back these out, and I'll feel this start to loosen up. Now, an item of note here, once you do actually get these loose, supporting the caliper can be important. This is a fairly light aluminum caliper on a very strong stainless line, so it'll be okay if this one hangs by um, the weight of the caliper. However, if you've got something a little different, if you've got, say, a big old shovel banana caliper hanging off of maybe a weak rubber line, you might want to think about supporting your caliper somehow once you get it off there, whether that includes maybe a wooden block or a chalk to set it on, or perhaps unbending a coat hanger and running it from, a, from above in order to suspend the caliper a little bit. You might want to think about possibly supporting it if you have a really heavy caliper on a fairly weak brake line. So as I slide this thing off, we're going to get a better look at the caliper itself here. Now as I back this off, I'm going to be careful not to bang it against the wheel. And that's a big concern for you sport bike guys who have big, big rotors. So once I have this thing off here, we can sort of see some of the componentry here. Now what I need to do in order to get all of the pieces out of here so we can start assessing things is to remove this caliper pin. This is going to be the piece that's probably most different for most riders. Not everybody's going to have one pin. Heck, you might not even be able to see your pin. Your bike might not even use a pin. 
However, use this again as sort of a rough guideline for how this process is going to work out for you. You should have your factory service manual open, and between that and watching me do this, you should have a rough idea of how this process is going to go. So I'm gonna take a hook pick here, and the first thing I'm gonna do is remove this little cotter pin that retains this should it back out. So I'm gonna pop this puppy out of there and set that aside, because we're gonna reuse that. And then I'm gonna back the pin out. So you'll notice I have my hand both above and below this. Sometimes these things can sort of explode once you start taking parts apart. If you don't have a factory service manual, now is an excellent time to take a picture or two or maybe sketch out exactly how the parts are oriented if you're not sure. But again, I'm gonna push you to have your factory service manual handy. That's really the best way to make sure you get things back together. So you can see this caliper pin's loosening right up here. I'm gonna spin this out just a little farther. And some stuff, like I said, this might fly apart. I'm hoping it doesn't. We're gonna give this a little yank. Okay, so we have the pin out now, and my hand is holding everything else together here. So I'm gonna pull pieces out and kind of talk about them as I pull them out here. Now you'll notice right here, we're looking at the shim. All this does is provides a little bit of downward pressure. It keeps the pads from jiggling around inside of the caliper. We're gonna reuse this, so we wanna set this aside as well. Now you can see the pads are free. I'm gonna slide these out the bottom and we're gonna talk about these for just a moment. So we'll let that caliper set there. As I said, this is a pretty light caliper on a pretty strong brake line. We're okay to let that thing hang. Again, make sure that you're supporting yours if you do have a heavy one on a weak brake hose. So here are your actual pads themselves. So you can see here, as these have worn down, Ed's gotten some pretty good use out of these. Buzzsaw rides pretty hard, and he's gotten, he's gotten his money's worth out of these pads. There's a little bit of life left in them, but really these could probably stand to be replaced. So one of the things that's important as far as doing your brake job isn't just getting the new parts in there, but it's actually examining the old parts and making sure they're wearing correctly. One of the things I like to look at is fore to aft wear. So for instance, you can see this brake pad is actually worn pretty evenly fore to aft, and that's a good thing. It means it's not cocking in its bore. If you do notice some sort of a wear pattern like that that is tapered, that can indicate a few things. It might indicate improperly lubricated slide pins, but in this case, since there's only one pin, that wouldn't really be the issue. The other thing it might indicate too, though, is perhaps a set of um, caliper pistons that might be hanging up. You might have a piston that's hanging up somewhere and only one piston in a multi-piston system is doing its job. So it is really important to examine that fore to aft wear. Another thing that's important too, though, is top to bottom wear, how this thing is wearing from the outside of the, you know, the outer circumference of the brake into the center of it. Some of you may notice, again, that your pads could cock perhaps the other way too. Again, possibly due to improper lub improperly lubricated slide pins, or in a really bad scenario, if you've got a big ridge up at the top here of unused brake material, a lot of times that points to an improperly installed brake pad. If you see that, you should have your eagle eyes on and really be picky as you're pulling that thing apart to make sure everything was put together correctly Correctly, odds are you're probably gonna find a mistake. Just keep that in mind as you're assessing things. So in looking at both of these pads, they're actually in really good shape here. It looks like Ed's brake system is functioning normally as far as the hydraulics are concerned, and that's a great sign. The other thing we also wanna check out though too is the condition of the rotor itself. So this can be kind of important. Look at the surface of the rotor. You'll see this is nice and smooth. It looks really good. It's not glazed over, and there's also no deep scoring. If you happen to be doing brakes on your motorcycle because you heard a terrible noise like a ship scraping over the Great Barrier Reef, that's not good. What that probably was, was the metal backing plates digging into your rotors. It's an expensive sort of a thing. You're usually gonna have to replace your rotor if that happened. The reason is that if you wear those scores, those deep grooves into this rotor, they can chew into your new pads. All you're gonna do by replacing the pads is mask the symptom. You're not gonna address the problem. Now, even if your rotors do look really good like buzz saws do here with no deep scoring, we still need to measure them. The pads themselves, as they squeeze onto the rotor, scrub it away. They really just squeeze the thing until eventually the rotor wears down in thinness. So we're gonna take a micrometer here and check the thickness really fast. Now, when you do this, you wanna do it in a couple different places in order to determine the thickness and make sure that the rotor is actually good to go, both the inner and the outer, and at a couple places along the diameter of the rotor. This thing's in pretty good shape. So really, Ed's got some great, uh, some great wear going on here. His rotors aren't all ragged out. His hydraulics appear to be doing well. This is a perfect candidate for a new set of brake pads. So we're gonna continue with the process. At this stage, what I like to do is start cleaning some things up. And I usually use a brake-specific cleaner in order to do that. Cleaning things up allows me to do several things. First, it allows you to more carefully assess the condition of the components. The other thing it lets you do is make sure that all the parts that we're gonna be reusing, like the shim and the pin, 
they're gonna have a nice clean surface from when we lubricate them. Rather than mushing the lubricant into this dirty lubricant dirt mess, we can clean them off, start with a fresh slate, and we're gonna have nice clean lubricant hitting nice clean parts. So what I'm gonna do here is spray things down. I'm gonna spray the caliper down. Again, be careful with this stuff. This stuff is also not really that good for you. So put your gloves on, use your respirator if you have one. And one of the areas I wanna pay special attention to, I'm gonna turn this over so you can see, are actually the, uh, the caliper uh, pistons here. These are kind of important. So these are sealed really only with very delicate rubber seals. So it's important to get in here, get everything clean because that, that, um, that brake dust on there can actually be kind of acidic and it can wind up being abrasive as well. So this area especially is really important to get all cleaned up. I'm gonna grab a rag here to sort of help assist me making sure that I've gotten all the dirt and goop out of all the nooks and crannies on the caliper. That really is pretty important there. And again, just assess how things are looking. By cleaning things up, you should be exposing um, a little bit better to you know, the, the condition of the parts that you're actually working on. So at this stage, we're pretty much ready to rock and roll. Now the reason I clean before I start doing anything else, again, is because we're gonna have to move these caliper pistons back into the bore. This is really important because Ed's pads were wearing down as he used them, they got thinner and thinner and thinner. So these pistons had to come out closer and closer to the center in order to make the pads contact the rotor. Well, these nice new pads are much thicker, but they're not gonna fit in this same width space. So what we're gonna do is drive these caliper pistons back into their bores. Now again, the cleaning sort of becomes important here. Because these pistons are now exposed and we're gonna be shoving them back in there, we want them nice and clean. We're coming back in there. We don't wanna drive all sorts of dirt and goo and just general road muck back into the caliper. So by having these clean, we've ensured that we're ready to rock and roll as far as the caliper uh, piston withdrawal process. So I'm gonna use my fingers to push these in. Usually I'm strong enough I can get them in there. So I'm gonna try and cheat this towards you a little bit so you can actually see me driving these in. And you'll notice as you drive some in, some other ones might pop out, but eventually you should be able to work these all back into their bores. Now, if it turns out you're having trouble doing that, one of the things I like to do is grab the old pads and I will put them back into place and take a pry bar, a flathead screwdriver, and use something to drive them carefully back in. So what we're doing here, what we're looking for, as you can see, I think I'm just about there. We're looking for these pistons to be more or less flush with the caliper body itself. I think we're about there right here. You can see, with the exception of that last piston, we're pretty much flush here. This is gonna give us the room we need in order to get the pads back into the caliper and the whole assembly back up onto the bike. Now from here, what I need to do is lubricate some things before I start reinstalling. So let's get down to the workbench. I made a little bit of a mess here, but I'll show you some of the stuff I'm working on. So I'm gonna start lubricating things. The first thing I wanna talk about is the actual lubricant itself. You can't just use any old product here. You wanna use a brake specific lubricant. The one I'm using is actually silicone based. Silicone's good stuff to use because again, you've got rubber seals in the caliper there. Some of you who have slide pins for your caliper are going to have uh, rubber boots protecting them. If you're using anything that's petroleum based, it turns out that you can indeed tear up the rubber with a petroleum based product. The two are not really uh, compatible. So make sure, that you're, make sure that you're taking care of that. So I've cleaned up our caliper pin as well. I'm gonna lubricate this, and you want a fair, a fair amount of lube in there, but don't go crazy. We want enough lube that's gonna stay on there and it's gonna survive a couple of wet days, but we also don't want so much on there that's being flung all over the place. So use your judgment, but again, a little bit of lube goes a pretty long way here. Now, the other place I like to lube too, and this might sound a little crazy, is actually the backs of the pads. So I'm gonna put a little dollop on there. And the reason I like to do that is we're putting lubricant basically anywhere metal is moving against each other. So the pistons themselves hit the backs of the pads. A lot of times when people have brake noise, they can't figure out, it's not actually the lining material that's hitting the rotors making noise. Sometimes it's actually the backing plates on the, on the brakes actually uh, making contact and sort of standing up and singing, if you will, with respect to the caliper piston. So what I like to do is throw them on there and you'll notice I'm putting this stuff on here very, very thin layer. I like to liken it to buttering your toast or putting jelly on your toast in the morning. So I'm gonna slide these carefully down here. Now one of the other things you're gonna see me do here is actually get rid of these gloves. And the reason I'm doing it is because I have lube on them. Now as important as the lubricant is, we don't wanna actually throw the lubricant onto any of the moving parts of the bike that have to do with the braking. We don't want the friction surface getting gooped up. We don't want the pads getting contaminated. We also don't want any of it hitting the rotor. So be sure to change gloves frequently and don't get that lube all over the place. There's only a few select spots we wanna see lubricant. 
So as of right now, because I've got my caliper pistons driven back into the bore, I've got all my parts lubed up here, pretty much set to rock and roll, we're about ready to tackle the reinstallation process. So this part can get a little bit tricky because we're gonna be putting a couple things in play at the same time. You might feel like you need three or four hands. I'm gonna attack this right now. You guys are probably gonna have a couple laughs at my expense because it does get a little bit hairy. So we're gonna start loading the pads in one at a time. Again, being careful not to get lubricant all over the place. So we'll slide the first pad in. And this is also something I wanna talk about. It's probably gonna make a couple of you laugh, but it is really important. Pads are two-sided. <laughs> There's a friction material and then a non-friction material side. If you put these in backwards and you put the backing plate up against the rotor, you're gonna have a big problem. It's metal on metal. You're gonna ruin your rotor and you're probably gonna ruin your pad and you may not stop in time. So pay really careful attention and make sure that the parts of the brake pad that are supposed to touch the rotor are actually oriented correctly. So I've got these pads in here and I'm sort of holding them in with my hand. This might get, like I said, this might get a little bit tricky here. So now what I need to do is orient that um, shim clip back into place. So what this is gonna do is basically keep downward tension on the, on the pads so that they're not rattling around in here. So every time we're, we hit a bump, we don't hear the pads rattling about. So we're gonna install that puppy carefully in here. I'm probably blocking the camera just a bit, but we'll work that into place. So that's now in place. And from here, I need to slide my pin in. So this is where it gets just a little bit tricky. So kind of just a one piece at a time sort of thing. And I'm gonna feed this in here, get past the first pad, which appears to be going well. We're gonna go over the shim clip in order to keep that pinned in place. And then from here, we can get that last pad popped in. And after we work that in there, we're pretty much set to fly. We can now snug this puppy down. So let me grab my tool here. So at this stage, I'm gonna tell you, you should be using your factory service manual. You should check out your factory torque spec and you should use your torque wrench. Do as I say, not as I do. I've done a lot of brake jobs. I think Buzzsaw is fairly confident that I'm not gonna send him careening into a school bus full of children. However, I'm gonna encourage you to do things the right way. Don't cut any corners. Use your factory torque spec on here. So I now have this thing snug down. One of the smaller things I'm gonna make sure that I do is reattach that little cotter pin, the just in case cotter pin. We're gonna slip that back into place. And from here, I really am just two bolts away from getting this ready to rock and roll. So it's important to have the pads spread. As I said, we have that nice big gap in there and that's gonna allow us to work the pads and caliper back over the rotor. Now this is in place. I'm gonna reinstall both of the retaining bolts here. Same deal applies on these as with the other bolt. You really should be using your factory spec on these with a, with a torque wrench. Sometimes though, we break rules. I'm gonna snug these down, swap out my socket here. And at this point, we're really getting close to the end of the job. So I'm gonna get these in place and tighten them up. Now, if you have a dual disc system like we're working on here, you're gonna wanna think about the other side. You don't wanna do one set of these. It's okay to do fronts or your rear independent of each other. That's perfectly fine. But if you're working on an axle with multiple calipers, you wanna make sure you service both of the calipers at the same time. That's pretty important. You're gonna wanna service those to make sure that, again, your braking performance is the same side to side. If your brakes are operating differently from each side, you can wind up with weird pulls or strange behavior. And the other thing to think about too is we're not just replacing the pads we're also lubricating some pretty important parts here so if one side is lubricated real well but the other side hasn't gotten any attention you can notice a difference in performance from one caliper to the other so we're all snug down here on this thing after we get that other side done we're ready to rock and roll except for one important step because we drove those caliper pistons back in they're not really close to the pads right now. So if you grab a hold of the brake lever, you're gonna notice it's gonna, it's gonna sink right to the bars. You may actually have to grab several times to pump that back up and get those caliper pistons back to where they need to be. This is really important that you do this before you roll your bike out of the garage. It can be very disconcerting to go ripping down the road and have absolutely no brake power after three or four grabs of the lever. Make sure you do that, it's a really important step. So that about wraps up a brake job. It's the ZLA way of getting brakes on your motorcycle. If you want a little more information about this, about some of the pad options you have, and then also some tips and tricks that we didn't show you here in the video, scoot on over to the Common Tread article by clicking that info button. If you're watching us on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe to us. And you can drop a comment down below for some other riders if you have some sort of a tidbit that might help other people out and do a great job on their brakes. As always, I'm Lemmy, I'm out of here.